walked through the cell blocks, Peter began to hear what he felt were the voices of tortured spirits. Alcatraz was a place that drove men mad. Military prison. They're in pain, and I'm in pain, and there's blood here. They couldn't break out of the prison. There's a strange pull you feel viewing this imposing outpost from shore. It was once the toughest prison in America, home to Al Capone, Machine Gun Kelly, and the Birdman of Alcatraz. It started in the 1850s as a military fortress defending San Francisco Bay. We're in the guardhouse built in 1857. It was intended to be used as a defensive point. There was a gun that would have been mounted here, but it got, never got used. Instead, this was turned into the first cell block on Alcatraz in 1863. Insubordinate soldiers were locked away in tiny cells, measuring only three by six feet. They were beaten, chained to the walls, and forced to endure hard labor on the rock. Alcatraz boomed. And by 1909, the cell house that dominates the top of the island had been built for the incarceration of military prisoners. Alcatraz remained a barbaric military prison until the 1930s, when social upheaval reached a peak and mobsters ruled the big city streets. The Justice Department requested that the military surrender the island, and Alcatraz was transformed into a maximum security prison, the last stop for America's most hardened criminals. The monsters of society were stored here until 1963, when the prison closed. Alcatraz was opened to the public in 1973 and attracts 4,000 tourists a day. There are reports that Alcatraz is haunted. Could the pain and suffering endured by prisoners at Alcatraz still exist today in the form of ghosts? When you walk in, it's really dark and it's very cold in there and I got the chills and I had to leave. I didn't like it at all. Normally I don't <laughs> believe in ghosts, but in a place like that where there have been so many violent deaths and the kind of people that were there, you know, it's quite possible. I think uh, it, it's a natural idea that when you come onto the island you're going to be experiencing something a little, a little special, you know, a little extra. Sounds of a cell door closing, uh, somebody appearing and then disappearing. Uh, those type of things would uh, uh, really send chills up your spine. Ray Polo, a former Park Service ranger on the island, claims many ghostly encounters have occurred. But for the past 19 years, the Park Service has refused to talk about reports that Alcatraz is haunted. Official policy about ghosts on Alcatraz is uh, we would say that, in, in effect, well, maybe things had happened, maybe they didn't. It's just something that uh, it wasn't uh, officially sanctioned. Are there ghosts on Alcatraz? We asked nationally renowned psychic investigator Peter James to spend a night on the rock. I walked with Peter as he tried to communicate with what he calls entities inside Alcatraz. As we walked through the cell blocks, Peter began to hear what he felt were the voices of tortured spirits. Alcatraz was a place that drove men mad. Military prison. They're in pain, and I'm in pain, and there's blood here. They couldn't break out of the prison. Like a psychic bloodhound, Peter was drawn to out-of-the-way places around the island. I know little or nothing about Alcatraz other than what I learned here during the past two days that I've been here. And my, my feelings are strongly that there is an energy here unlike ever, any, any other that I've ever experienced. Peter claimed to have little knowledge of the history of Alcatraz. He said he let the spirits guide him, and they led him here to an area known as the Citadel. This particular one, I feel there was a loss of life here. And this man was a sergeant. And this is, this is, an, this is an American life that was lost in this particular cell. And uh, I, I feel badly, I, I, I feel beaten. I, I don't feel that I, that I lost life from gunfire. I lost life because of neglect. 
I was neglected. I, I am responding to, there's a definite sense here that I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. There could not be any crime in the world worth the punishment that I feel uh, this entity endured. Peter had correctly identified the dank dungeon where military prisoners were kept. The specific ghost images he felt were later substantiated by our experts. I'm feeling an American here. I'm feeling an American serviceman right here. Men were kept chained down there, um, sometimes chained through iron rings to the floor, other times, as we understand, chained with iron rings in the ceiling. Something is like going through my stomach. It feels like something metal, and my legs are in chains as well. And I'm feeling that if I stay here much longer, that I'll die. Peter's feelings of death and torment followed us through the night. At daybreak, we replayed Peter's observations for our experts, like ex-guard Al Bloomquist. And after each of Peter's encounters, our experts confirmed the accuracy of his psychic visions. Forced to comply with these orders that I'm, that I'm being given, and I feel like I'm being trapped here in this particular um, um, area. We were told there's trouble on the rock. On May the 2nd, 1946, six inmates with other lesser accomplices decided to blast their way out of the prison. I feel like I'm being thrown into this cell and I'm being thrown into that cell. During that time, they gathered up nine officers, put them inside of cells to be used as hostages. Who are the people in here? Four or five? Are there uh, prisoners? Uh, no, I am a person of authority. I, I feel like I should be on the other side of this of, of, of the bars. But I'm here against my will. I am I am I am here by I am placed here by force and and at the point of a gun. Who's feel, holding it? Who's shooting? Um, <clears throat> I, I, I feel um, there is there is uh, there is a jo that that Joseph is involved here. Joseph Kretzer, he was one of the toughest of the bunch. He was really a mean dog. What does well, Joseph have to do with this? Joseph is keeping me captive here. Joseph is placing me here against my will. Where's Joseph? Joe you know, Kretzer took the 45 automatic and started shooting these officers, innocent officers, inside the cell. I'm sensing that I, Bill, or William, uh, lost his life here. Only one. Only one. Four or five here. One, there are four one here, but, but others are wounded. But I only feel one loss of life in this particular uh, place. Whose voice are you hearing? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing William. There's a Bill or William. William Miller later died in the hospital in San Francisco. Other officers were very seriously wounded. The name starts with the C. Cecil Corwin had his lower jaw torn away. It's a wonder they weren't all, all killed in the spot. Alarm sounded. Military reinforcements arrived. The inmates fled to a utility corridor in C Block. 46 years later, Peter James led our cameras to the same, now dark, corridor. Peter, you've sensed a lot in there. Yes. Why, why don't you take, we have an infrared lens on the camera, why don't you go in there with the camera and see what you can do on I would, I would, I would like that. I would like that. Uh, Joseph? <coughs> I'm coming through. Mart, 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 Marty, Marty, Mart. Give me a better, give me a better verification of a name. Marv, Marvin, Marvin, is that Marvin? Marvin Hubbard died in the utility quarter of C Block. Oh, there's a, I, I am responding to a sensation here and I feel like I'm losing consciousness and what uh, Joseph is telling me is that he's been shot. Joseph Dutch Kretzer died in the utility corridor at C Block. Oh it's cold, it's freezing back here. There's a cold spot here. And, oh yes, hello? There is a third soul here with the letter B. Bernard Paul Coy died in the utility corridor of C Block. They said they're moaning. 
moaning. The pain is so intense. They're, they're like little boys back here. They're, they're, they're moaning, all, almost asking for the guidance of their parents right now. There are at least a hundred ghosts here, a hundred entities that walk these corridors, looking for a way out, looking for that life force that they seem to have lost somewhere, tragically. I can't really say that I'm a believer myself, but uh, like many people, I guess there are some things that just simply are unexplained. After my night on Alcatraz, it was hard to ignore the images and voices evoked by Peter James, but I still have questions about what we experienced together. Joining me now from Los Angeles is psychic Peter James. Peter, good of you to join us. Thank you, Jim. Nice to have you here. We were together there that evening, and people who see the tape might wonder, is this guy for real? I don't believe it. It looks like he was making it up. He probably memorized a book. He talked to the guards. He went there half a dozen times. How do you answer that? I had no prior knowledge other than what the general public knows about Alcatraz. We were there together. I tried to be as open as I could through those hours. And as I told you at the time, I didn't hear the voices. I didn't see anything. I didn't sense what you sensed. Does that say something about me or about you, the differences between us, or does it say something about the entities? They don't choose to speak to you. It says something about all of us, Tim, in that we all spend too much time in trying to disprove that there is another side rather than to simply bridge those gaps of ignorance, as I put it. And yes, some of us are more acutely sensitive as I am. Can you turn it on and off, Peter, or are you seeing and hearing things all the time? I see things all the time. I, I don't know that you can, but I am able to turn it off and on, yes. Peter James, thank you. Thank you for having me. And we will be back with more sightings in just a moment. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.